Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 1. <clears throat> and brethren, and, uh, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet none are now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and division, they are that are ye not carnal and walk as men. And I want to just a little while uh, uh, speak on the subject, the church's worst disease. Now I'm going to try my best tonight to preach an hour and a half. And the reason, I'm really not. But somebody told me the other day, said, you've got for you don't preach hardly very long at all. I said, are you comparing me with Mark or Sam? And uh, they wouldn't answer that question. I don't like people that won't answer my question. I answered their question, then why wouldn't they answer mine? So I'm going to preach tonight, and I'm going to out-preach Mark and Sam. Double, together, right? Just kidding, just kidding. The church's worst disease. Lay your Bibles down if you would and lift your hands. Sister Creasy, lead us in a course. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you tonight. His blood was precious. God, I appreciate you, Lord. I appreciate you. Lord, bless the message. And his blood it heals my body. To your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. I'm so thank you. Glad his, his precious, precious blood still flows, flows from, from Calvary. Calvary. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you, Sister Creasy. Uh, let, me try to, let me try to uh, explain a couple of things before I really get into the, <clears throat> the message. I want to try to explain what he meant when he said, uh, and I, brethren, verse 1, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. He was saying that I can't, I can't speak unto you as if you're spiritual. In other words, he's saying I have to talk in a different tone. Because he went on to say, but as carnal. And he was saying that some of the spiritual things you can't understand. He said, but some of the carnal things... Uh, you can understand. Kind of ain't that kind of the way we are. We have a problem sometimes understanding the spiritual stuff. And we don't have that much of a problem understanding the carnal stuff. When, it, when you say carnal, that means that if, we, if you're carnal, that means you, uh, you're, you're more attentive to things of the world, not necessarily sin, he wasn't saying sin because he did call them babes in Christ. So he wasn't saying they were sinners. And he was just saying they're, they're not spiritual. He said, and he was saying instead of being spiritual, they're carnal. And so this is what the apostle said. He said, I fed you with milk. That meant he fed you, fed not generally, literally milk. He was saying milk of the word, something smooth and light. And not with meat, because that's something that's heavy and thick. And, and so he was saying, I, when I preach unto you, when I fed you, I fed you not as, as if, you was, if you were spiritual, but that you were carnal. For ye are yet carnal, cause, but he called them babes in Christ. So he's not talking to sinners. He's talking to the church at Corinth. And so he's calling them babes in Christ. Paul testified uh, at the at uh, Corinth when he when he went there, he testified that Jesus Christ was God. He taught them that. He said in in Acts chapter eighteen verse one, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found certain Jew named Aquila, born in, in Pontus, uh, uh, lately came uh, from Italy. 
Italy. I'll get it with his wife Priscilla uh, because uh, that uh, Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came, came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, it means of the, of the same occupation, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, this was at Corinth, and persuaded the Jews and, and the Greek. And when Silas and Timothy was come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And so he taught the church at Corinth. He actually established the church there. He built that church. And uh, he established it on the fact that Jesus, uh, to the Jews, that Jesus was that Christ. Now, they didn't receive him everywhere he went. But some did. Because he established a church of many the scripture teaches us, believed on Christ, and then a church was built. Paul established the church. These were men and women that were born again, just like you and I are. They were born of the water and of the spirit. If you want to find out how they were baptized, you just, you just search out Paul's teaching, his writings there in the book of Acts and the epistles. You, work, you search that out and you'll find out Paul baptized them or had them baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He established that church. But then after, now the church was built strong. It was a strong church. And, and Paul's preaching himself, was, he, he, his ministry was strong. He said, my preach and my teaching was not with excellent, excellence of speech. He said, but of power and the demonstration of the Spirit of God that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. He had that wisdom, but he said, I didn't preach that wisdom. He said, I preached that your faith uh, would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, and, and that you would recognize the presence of God. I'm not quoting all of that verse. It, it slips my mind. But uh, he established this church there at Corinth, and, and you, you would... You would have to know, you that have read or heard or studied anything about the Apostle Paul's ministry uh, and the ministry even at Corinth, you would have to know in your mind that that was a strong apostolic church. No question about it. He established that church. And I don't know how long that church uh, was in operation until a disease broke out in that church. Something happened. And Paul said that ye are still carnal. Carnal means you got other things on your mind. It, 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 he didn't say sin. He didn't call them sinners. He didn't say you backslid. He called them babes in Christ. In other words, they have not, they didn't grow up. They came in, and they were baptized, and maybe even received the Holy Ghost. But then they, this disease, now this, the disease part is my words, okay? Then this disease broke out there in the church, and they became carnal. Paul said, you're still carnal, which meant at one time they must not have been carnal. Are you understanding? And, and so, and, and, and uh, Paul's teaching He's saying, he's saying that, uh, that he teaching, he's teaching us that our body is some, it, we're subject to disease. We're subject to uh, get sick. You know, we do it. Some, you know, some live half their life in the emergency room. And probably a, a, a good praying through would have helped a lot of that. Uh, but our bodies do get sick. And I'm old enough to know that one day I'm going to get sick. And then I'm going to get sicker. Then I'm going to get real sick. Then somebody's going to pray for me and I'm going to get well. This disease that broke out in that church, the, the, just like the uh, human body 
catches disease. The church body can catch disease. It might not should be, but it happens. He went on to say, let me see. He went on to say uh, that, uh, that division and strife broke out in that church. He said in verse number three, he said, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division. And he said, Are ye not carnal and walk as men? So this church that should not, it should not have happened. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are or how spiritual you think you are. Everybody experiences carnality. Everybody. At one time or another. Probably a lot more than one time. Sometimes we kind of walk in, in, the, in carnal, carnality. Sometimes we walk in the flesh. When I say that, we are flesh. But sometimes we walk with other things on our mind rather than God or the Holy Ghost. That's called walking in carnality. One way that happens in a church, after you've been born again, I thank God for these that, that are being born of the water up here. I want to see them born of the Spirit. I want to see them go all the way. I thank God for it. And, and they made that step. You repent, you get baptized, then you get the Holy Ghost. That's what the book said. They made that step. And we're just waiting for the other to come along. We're going to keep praying for it. But uh, one way that a church can get carnal is the fact that they stray and stay too far from the Word of God. Other things take the place of the word of God. I, I believe that many times, and this happened here, and it'll happen again, that uh, the Holy Ghost just kind of takes over, and, and we don't have any preaching. Well, we have preaching, but we don't have a, uh, you know, a preacher to get up and actually take a text and a different one. Well, like Ernie tonight, he preached enough there to save us if we'll listen to it. You, you see what, and, and, but when we stray too far from the word of God uh, a pastor ain't going to let that happen there's going to be preaching in this pulpit it's going to happen We're, you come to church you come expecting me or somebody to preach we can have a singing I, I'm, really, I'm not really into all that I'm not, I love the singing that we've got but I ain't, I'm not into getting these groups to come in because man, they may not believe fat meat's greasy so I'm not into all of that don't say to me, you're going to be apostolic. That's the way I believe it. But what happens is when we stray too far from the preaching, and when we, there's always something else going on when preaching is going on. You find people out in the foyer. You find them standing out there under the canopy or over in the Sunday school room drinking coffee or bringing, oh, why well, I need to get out of there, don't I? You see, what's, and, and that's too far from the Word of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. There's nothing going on outside this building tonight more important than what's going on on inside of this building. <laughs> nothing. I'm going to drink my coffee, but I'm not going to do it while somebody's preaching. I'm going to have, I'm, are you understanding? Now, nobody drinks more coffee than me, man. It, I could keep Folgers in business. And, it's, and I probably drink too much. I probably shouldn't drink that much. But thank God we don't preach against it. But what it is is, but when we stray too far, when, when one of these other preachers are up here, Brother Billy Pooh, Sunday night, preaching, that was the most important thing of that service. It was more important than the water baptizing because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the mire and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. And many people have a problem with that word being discerner, being, being able to discern what you're thinking. And the reason people get carnal, they, get, they stray too far. They stay, uh, I told somebody one time, I said, the, the, the reason, thank you, sweetie, the reason people, uh, 
uh, backslide is because they do like the little guy did when he got on the bed and rolled off the bed that night. He stayed too close to the edge. And the reason people backslide, they stay too close to where they crawled in at. That's why people backslide. And, and, and the word of God becomes second fiddle. You know, well, that's just Pastor Creasy. He preaches that before. You, you better believe I have, and I'm going to preach it again. It's the most important thing we can do is preach. Uh, and so, and, and that's why people get carnal. The word digs. The word dig, the anointed word, the letter kill them, but the spirit give us life. What is that saying, Ernie? That is saying a preacher that calls himself a preacher, if he ain't anointed, he'll take the word there and he'll hack people up with it. But if he's anointed, it gives life because the, spe- the spirit is behind what he or she is saying. And so the letter kills, but the spirit, it gives life carnality will move you away from the Spirit of God. It, 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 things will be more important. I could, I could preach against fishing on Sunday. I could preach against hunting on Sunday. I could get, I preach against playing golf on Sunday. I could, preach, I could just preach against laying in the sack on Sunday. It's all the same thing. Are you understanding? Because it, 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 it develops from a carnal mind. You get up on Sunday, you're, you're sick or don't feel good. Now, I understand you sometimes when you're sick. I understand that. I understand that. So please don't mistake this, okay? But if I feel like going to Walmart, I feel like coming to the house of God. If, I, if, I'm, up, if I'm up to going shopping, I have people miss church because they're sick, and I go to Walmart and they're at Walmart shopping. That's why they're carnal. I didn't say they were backslid. I didn't say they was a bad person. I said they're carnal. Because something, they have put something between them and God. The word of God is the best thing in your life, honey. I'm one of the most important people in your life. Now, these other ministers, they do a great job, and they can preach me under the table any day, but they ain't the pastor. I am. And God uses me to minister to you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So carnality will move you away from God. Uh, when, when, a, when a minister's ministering and he, and he gets in your wagon, carnality will cause you to resent what the minister is saying, even though he's right. The book of Revelation said in 2.5, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first, do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove the candlesticks. That's, I think that's in reference to the spirit of the candlesticks out of his place, except thou repent. So carnality will cause the spirit to be removed. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you backslid. I'm not saying you're going to hell. I'm just saying that's a good way you get away from the church and you get away from, and then you'll go to miss the church. Who was that told me? I believe it was you, Brother Weems. What did the other day said, or or somebody maybe Brother might have been Brother Town Bowley was talking said, uh, uh, Christian is like an old car or an old truck. It goes to missing before it quits, and, and it's true. It's true. And, and I don't mean that rude, but sometimes I need to get rude because uh, it, it'll pull you away from God, that carnality. And this is what Paul was saying. He built that church, ladies and gentlemen. He established that place at Corinth. He baptized them people, he and, and Silas and some of the others maybe. And, and he recognized. Uh, so carnality is having a... Uh, a nature of the flesh. And again, that's, I'm not saying that's necessarily a sin, but it's that when you say the flesh, that, that means you're, you're desiring to uh, please what this person wants rather than what God would want. Uh, goes back to missing church. It goes back to 
missing prayer service. It goes back to missing the choir practice. It goes back, you know, just just you just you fill in the blank, and it, it's it call, it's called carnality. It, it's called being controlled by the fleshly things of of your life. Being controlled, you know. Uh, I, I told somebody the other day, I, I talked about, uh, uh, somebody was talking about a, uh, uh, babies in church. I said, thank God for them. And somebody asked me, said, don't they bother you? I said, not at all. I don't hear them. And if you listen to me, you wouldn't hear them. And the reason I don't hear them, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm preaching. And babies don't bother me. Uh, if, they, if they need changing, take them in the bathroom, change their britches, bring them on back. It doesn't bother me. Because when I see a bunch of babies, I see a growing church. Are you understanding? And, and it doesn't bother me. And, but the fleshly, uh, the nature of the flesh, the nature of the flesh wants to do things contrary or opposite to the spirit. Nature of the flesh don't like to fast. I don't mind fasting if I just wouldn't get hungry. I get hungry every time I try to fast. But the, the flesh don't like that because... Normally, normally when I'm fasting, somebody wants to buy my dinner. I'm serious now. I'm serious. And I get, a, <laughs> I get attacked by a jelly donut demon <laughs> when I'm fasting. The flesh don't like to fast. I don't like to fast, but I know it's good for me. It's good for my spirit. When I'm fasting and praying, when I come to the altar, when I'm fasting, I, I feel like I'm on, I'm, I'm on legal ground. Because Jesus himself said, uh, these things come only by fasting and prayer. When I'm fasting and praying, I'm legal. When I anoint you with oil here on Tuesday nights, and sometimes I have fast that, fast that day, wife and I have, I'm legal. When I put that oil on your forehead and pray for you, I'm expecting a move of God because Jesus said it comes by fasting and prayer. Are you understanding? I don't like that. I, I, I don't like I don't eat breakfast much early. I eat breakfast around 10 or 11 o'clock. I can eat the legs off the table at that time of the day. But I don't like an early, I'm not an early morning person as far as eating. But I don't, I, I don't necessarily enjoy fasting. I, am I making sense? And carnality pulls you away from that kind of lifestyle. It's always easy to eat. And it's always easy not to pray. Uh, I, I got to getting up at 4 o'clock every morning. I got to doing that when I drove a school bus. Because I, I, I always like to get up early and pray. I, I didn't get up that early and pray before I started driving. But then I had what I had to do. I had, I had my hour of prayer. And then I had to shave and shower. And in the wintertime, I had to start big cheese about 45 minutes to an hour before, I'm, I'm sure y'all have heard my bus crank up way early, uh, so it would warm up. So I put all that together. Brother Ernie, and I, I, I figured I'd got to get up 4 o'clock to get all of it done. Flesh don't like to do that. Even right now, I, I wake up at 4 o'clock, and I think, I'm going to lay here to 4.15. And now I'm not having to get on the bus. I just I might can make it to four up to four thirty, quarter to five. Are you understanding? The flesh, it, 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 you can't allow the nature of the flesh to control you. It causes carnality, and I'm gonna tell you now, it'll drag you away from the church. It will. You're being controlled by a fleshly appetite, something of the flesh, governed. By human nature. It's just human nature for some things. Some things we preach is hard. Like this, you know, somebody slaps you, let them slap you again. That's hard. I ain't never done that. And I hope I never am put to a test because I'm not ready for it. I try to be. I remember Brother Billy, the story you told me, what God told you one time, you was having a situation, and God told you to, to drop it, leave it alone. Vengeance is mine, saith God. And, and, this, and this, when you're controlled by this fleshly appetite, that's, that's, how you, that's when you don't seek God. 
It's easier not to pray than it is to pray. Brother Herring used to call all night prayer meetings. I, I used to think, I wish he wouldn't do that. But I went, and we'd pray for about an hour, and then we'd get our Bibles, and we'd sit around and read and study and then pray some more all night long. Flesh don't like that. Right. I like to go to bed at 9 o'clock. That's my bedtime. That's where all good people, that's when all good people go to bed, 9 o'clock. I'm <laughs> kidding about that. I was praying that one night, Brother Ernie, and Joe Clay was a, a deputy in, on the North Precinct in Frazier. Where the, back, they, back then, that was the bad place. That was Dodge City. And he come over the next morning to Brother Herring's house, and they were drinking coffee. And, well, let me back up to the, to the Friday night. Somebody in, the, in our men said, I believe we ought to pray for Joe Clay. And so we all just joined together and prayed for Joe. And uh, the next morning at breakfast, they were, or they, they were having coffee. Brother Herring said, Joe, what was you doing? And gave him the time last night. And Joe thought a minute and said, Rev, said I had been called out to a joint there in Frazier. A bad place. He said, I knew it was a bad place when I got the call. He said, when I went in, said it was so dark I couldn't see. I had to wait to let my eyes adjust. And he said, when it did, there was a big black man standing right in front of me with a 38 and had it pointed right in my eyes, just like that. And he said, I just stood there. And cause he said, I didn't have my weapon drawn. said, I didn't know what to do. Because this man, all he had to do was pull the trigger. He said, we stood there and, and, and stared at each other and said, finally, the man left the pistol down, put the hammer down, and turned to hand it to him. And prayer works. Amen. That was exactly the time. Amen. Carnality will pull you away from that. Because it ain't too many don't like to go to bed and sleep. So, but it it it, uh, it's, it gives you a, it's a fleshly appetite governed by human nature, and that's opposite from the Holy Ghost. I'm hurrying. I want you to look at this church at Corinth just a minute. Paul preached there. Apollos preached there. Conversions occurred there. People were being saved, just like it is here. Probably multi multiplied many more times, of course, because I don't claim to be Paul by any stretch. But things were happening. People were being converted. But carnality broke out in that church, just like it does in any church. We Then right on down from that, we read about the gifts of the Spirit there in Corinth. Prophecy. Gift of tongues, gift of the interpretation of tongues, gifts of healing, things of that sort. We read all that in, in the book of Corinthians. We read all about it. They had an outward show. But one writer said, a friend of mine said, but they didn't have no inward glow. All they had was an outward. And the inside was carnal, according to the apostle Paul. Paul, so Paul hit it right on the head. He didn't, he didn't sugarcoat it. He said, you are carnal. You've let carnality get a hold of you. That's when he said, and I, brother, and I could not speak to you as spiritual. You couldn't take it. Did you know there's people today that can't take the word of God? It, it, the word of God is offensive to some people. Especially if they're doing what you're saying he shouldn't do. And 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 there's as people and he said as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now, again, I'm gonna repeat, he didn't say they were backslid. He didn't say they were bad people. He said they were babes in Christ. Babes could take the milk, but babes couldn't take the meat. 
just like your child, like that baby back there, a brother, a brother named back there, that, that baby can't eat a hamburger or a ribeye steak. That baby takes milk. Well, you know, and he said, that's why these Christians were, they couldn't take that spiritual filet mignon or that spiritual whatever. They had to take the, the milk of the word. You, you, you know, don't rub my feathers wrong, preacher. You're going to offend me, and I'm going to quit. I'm coming, I'm going there too in just a minute. So, so, and it causes carnality. Let me tell you something. A person that's not carnal, a person that is spiritual minded, you ain't going to offend that person. If you tell that person that sin is sin and it's going to hurt them and, and it's not good for them, and uh, any dodo would want to listen to that. If I'm telling you something that's going to hurt you down the road, old Brother Heron used to tell us, if I tell you there's a bear out there in the, in the, in the backyard and you go out there and get hurt, it's your own fault. It's not my fault. And, and so he's talking about this carnal, this, uh, uh, this, and he said, I couldn't, uh, it's, I couldn't feed you as spirits. I couldn't feed you the, the, the hard, the hard preaching. You know, sometimes our preaching can be hard. When you start talking about some things, it, it can be hard. But if I read it to you out of the book, you can like it or lump it. It's, it's out of the book. People get offended, offended sometimes by the word of God. Because it's, a, it's like a two-edged sword, and it causes carnality. Even carnal, uh, even, as, uh, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat. Uh, in other words, he was saying, I try, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, nourish you. That's like that, like that baby back there. Uh, Sutty? Sut, Sutton? Yeah, like little Sutton back there. Uh, mama's feeding that. She's trying to nourish that child. She's trying to bring him up. Are you understanding? She's trying to. She's not going to feed him something that's going to mess up his little tummy. That he have the colic or something, whatever they call it, all night long, and nobody gets any rest when that happens. Are you understanding? And this is Paul. That's what Paul is saying. He said, "I'm feeding you with the milk," and and said, "And because you can't take the other stuff, you can't deal with it. There's people who can't deal with hard preaching." Then he went on in another place. He said, you should have been able. You've been around long enough. You ought to be able to take the meat. You know, I can handle that filet mignon. Just invite me out and I'll show you. I can handle a big and I 12 ounce one. Baked potato. Salad bar. Banana pudding. I can handle all of that. Don't worry about making me sick. But, but babies can't do that. And we ought to be able to handle the meat of the word. Everybody in here, you ought to be able to handle some hard preaching. Amen. Amen. Am I doing okay? Am I doing okay? Um, he said now, he said, so I, I have fed you with milk and, and not with meat, but for here unto ye were not able to bear it. You, you couldn't deal with it. Neither yet now are ye able. He said, you're still not able to take it. And I'll tell you, it goes back to being carnal, carnally minded. Go back to pushing that word of God back and, and not, not taking the word of God. So the question's asked, can a Christian be carnal? Absolutely. Absolutely they can. Because Paul called them brethren. Brethren. He didn't say they were backslid or on the way to hell, he said they just can't take the meat of the word of God. People get offended. That's where a pastor or someone, some good saint in the church can, can nourish that person, talk to that person, and, and treat that person like a babe and, and where they'll be nourished in the word of God. And the carnality will go away. Hope I'm making sense. Is that my first hour? I'm on my first, okay, I'm still on my first hour. All right, Paul called them brethren, babes, babes in Christ. So what was their problem? Why, why could they not? They were spiritually sick. They weren't physically sick. They were spiritually sick. 
Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, I, know, I know people that's quit church because preaching was too hard. You got one preach, wrote, he'll quit because it ain't hard enough. Then you got one who will quit because it's too hard. You know, there's no in the middle of the road. If I'm going to preach, I us preach it too hard. If we're going to quit anyway, might as well quit for a good reason. And he talked about the, the uh, this is the danger in the church today. That people are too carnal. Ears that hear, and ears that hear not, and eyes that see not. Are you understanding? Are you understanding? And uh, so, to to avoid that, it takes the preached word of God to avoid that. It was a body. It's, it is a body that could not function spiritually. You know, there's people that. You know, there's people that won't even go to church if the pastor ain't there. And I appreciate people's confidence. But what if I kick the bucket? You know, what are you going to do then? There's people, And I thank God for people that, that want to hear me preach because I want to preach. It's what I'm called to do. But they can't, people can't function. Some people cannot function spiritually. They could not receive the truth. The truth hurts sometimes. I tell you what hurts about the truth sometimes is the truth is that you recognize the truth, but you, it hurts because maybe mama or daddy or Aunt Susie or Aunt Laverne or somebody didn't believe it that way, and it seems like the preacher is saying that person is going to hell because they don't believe like we believe. We're not saying that. We're saying the hard preached word, because in the scripture, there was a, a, a scripture where a man, I wish I could, I'll remember that brother's name in the scripture. I lose it every time. Sister Creasy helped me. I heard, heard Apollos then preaching, and, and, he, and he asked him, how was he baptized, and so forth and so on. And he said, under John's baptism. And he said, well, John only baptized the baptism of repentance, saying you should believe on Christ. And when he heard this, he was baptized in the name of Jesus. So that rises a question, was he saved before then? Doing all he knew to do. I don't think the apostle rebuked him because he, 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 uh, he op opened up the word of God to him more perfect. I'm not trying to say your uncle's wrong or your mama's wrong. I'm just saying this is right. That's all I'm saying. And meet people have a problem sometimes with the truth. They, and they can't bear that. They can't, they can't receive the truth. Of, uh, and so there was envy and strife and division. Did you know it's a sin to cause division in a church? It's a sin to have your little clique. Got this little clique over here for Brother Creed said, this little clique here can't stand him. And this little clique over here, they're waiting to see which clique wins. Sound like a Democrat and Republican, don't it? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. There, there are, there are. The other church I pastored, hey, one man, man, was, was really, really uh, supported me, I thought. And, and I thought, this guy's really behind me, man. He'd take, ride us to the house, and, and we'd go eat with him. And, man, we just had great fellowship until I got too tough with the Word of God. And he told me, he said, well, I wasn't there before you, no way. I just want to say, well, that ain't going to take no bread off my table. But you understand what I'm saying? When there's division, you don't win souls in a church that's divided. There's too much yin-yanging. Now, I'm not saying, as far as I know, there's not here. As far as I know, this is not the case here. But I'm just telling you, don't let it become the case. Just don't let it become that. Uh, and so, so it's hard for some people to receive the truth, the, the truth of the Word of God. Uh, he said, because there's envy, there's strife, and there's division. Carnality is the cancer of, of a church. Too carnal. It's a killer. It kills the spirit. Division will kill the spirit. Fuss it. Hatred, you know, and that will kill the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do buy the things of the flesh, Paul said in Romans 8, 5. But they that are of the spirit, or they that are after the spirit, the, the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
For to be carnally minded is death. It's death to the spirit. I, a preacher, you can't preach if you're carnal minded. If you're trying to do it, you may as well quit. You may as well start selling shoes or something. <laughs> carnal mind don't do that. Uh, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. That's verse number seven. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That goes back to what I was saying a while ago. If when you're carnally minded, you're not subject to God. You're subject to that carnal appetite. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But there is also now. Now here's the good part. There's a healer. There's a healer for all this situation. It's found in Romans 8 and 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So we need the spirit in our life. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as, many as are led, this is my favorite verse, and I'm closing. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So let's not be carnal-minded. Don't let that disease attack, attack this church. Be spiritually-minded. Be involved. Get involved. Because to be spiritually-minded is life. Hallelujah. Stand with me. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the word of God that's been brought to us tonight. Thank you for your people, your children. God bless each one. In the name of Jesus, stand with me. Lord bless you. Join me around the front. You that will, just join me around the front. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord.